Who would have thought you'd ever see a 1915 Ford Model T motoring down a residential street in Grand Cache, Alberta? It actually rides way better than I would have thought. It belongs to RPAP director Dr. John Gillette. It's actually one of two Model T's in this town. John came to Grand Cache in 1997 from South Africa after a short stint in Regina. Grand Cache is as beautiful as it gets. To me, it's more beautiful than Jasper, more beautiful than Banff. On my bedroom balcony, I see 13 mountain peaks. Go outside and you can see 21 mountain peaks, although today it's smoky from the BC wildfires. John has hiked to the top of them all. He's an avid outdoorsman. Grand Cache is best known for its death race, a rugged 125 kilometer trek up and down these nearby mountains. I ran the first leg, which was a, just under 20 kilometers, and then came back home, picked up my rucksack, and went on a 10-day backpacking trip. John has soloed the death race once and has been part of a team on numerous occasions, including twice with his family. But I was the weakest link in the family team, so I think the kids ditched us after a while. John has taken me for a tour to see some of the stunning natural beauty in this area. This is actually part of the Death Race Trail, just south of the outskirts of Grand Cache. An area with lots of soul. So this is Split Rock, just outside of Grand Cache on the Sulphur Gates Road. And as you can see, you have to be super fit and healthy and thin to get through. Yeah, smoky and then the sulphur comes in over here. On to Sulphur Gates, the meeting place of sulphur and smoky rivers. Without the smoke is even more spectacular, as you can imagine. I can see why John has stayed here, despite some of the challenges of practicing medicine in a remote location. We're 145 kilometers from the closest next town, and there's nothing in between, no farms or anything like that. John's wife, Dr. Essie Bernard, also practices here in Grand Cash. I don't think there is another town in rural Alberta with the natural beauty of this town. So I think it's a privilege to live here. I think the nice thing about rural practice, or at least here, is you don't know what to expect on any given day. We'll just listen to your lungs if that's okay. So some days are quiet and, you know, just do clinic work. And then tomorrow all hell breaks loose and, you know, multiple trauma comes through the door. And that's what I think makes it exciting. We couldn't practice here if we didn't have that collegiality amongst the, at least the physicians to take call for, let's say, my patients when I'm not in town or not on call, and then the multidisciplinary team with the nurses at the hospital who, you know, always keen to help, lab, x-ray. We all work together for the good of the patient, and we have fun. John has been a director with RPAP since 2014. He's very passionate about our expanded role to support not only rural physicians, but rural health professionals. I think the plan's fantastic because it's not just physician based, it's rural healthcare professional based and I think that's vital to the stability of healthcare rurally. I hope that RPAP becomes the pivot around which all aspects of rural healthcare move.